Hi everybody, you're very welcome to this uh, beautiful day here at Holy Trinity Bali Lesson. Um, just I hope you enjoyed your worship with us today. Uh, also, I just wanted to take an opportunity and show you a little book that we have some left of. They were they were made uh, back in, uh, I think, 2005 uh, for information around the church. But if you've maybe joined with us on Facebook, you probably don't uh, realise that we have uh, such a wealth of history and indeed uh, very interesting facts from around the church and even as you walk through the graveyard you will see there are many graves of people and we also have some commonwealth graves uh, or, or they're actually war graves from world war one but this little booklet was uh, produced in 2005 and i hope to have it up on the website very soon but uh, i just want to walk you through the church if uh, you're not familiar with it and point out a few little bits and pieces and uh, also it's good for people who actually um, have uh, left these shores but it's good for you to see uh, your church and uh, the home uh, or parish in which you came from. Now, although there's been a Christian presence at Drumbo for over a thousand years the present church actually dates from 1791 and actually up in Drumbo village itself the Round Tower is probably the earliest Christian settlement and it's the site now of the Presbyterian Church but um, the village was taken over by the Presbyterian, or the old site in the village was taken over by the church, Presbyterian Church in 1882. And then the architect Charles Lilly was suggested by Lord Downshire, had already, who had already carried out several other commissions of parts of County Down. He was asked to consider designing the church where it is now on its current site. And the church was built um, and was ready for consecration on the 24th of July 1791 and uh, a copy of the deed of consecration is framed and hangs in the church and you'll see that in a moment or two. Now the only original bit of the church is in fact the porch and tower uh, which houses the bell so we'll just take a wee walk uh, in through the church and let you enjoy and have a look at what it looks like now. Indeed we have two magnificent trees outside the church and on the recent church quiz uh, Jack pointed out that their names are Adam and Eve, but the church does look magnificent, especially when the sun is shining on it. And just to uh, the left of the picture, you will see the vestry. And uh, indeed, that was quite an interesting history as well, but you can read about it in that little book and hopefully online. So as we come in through our little doorway, we're coming into uh, the porch of the church and indeed uh, you can see our lovely war memorial uh, to World War I and under that uh, we have a little book uh, that our parish secretary uh, Mark Douglas put together which is a fantastic book of all those who served indeed uh, during World War I and that was presented to this church and a number of other churches in the area uh, just uh, last year. Now uh, as we uh, already have noted that there is this is original this is the original part of the church before the church was remodeled and added to uh, in the, right, just after the 1800s. And at the very top there, you will see the little round oculus window. They are all original features of the church. And they tried to replicate them on the other side uh, whenever uh, they decided uh, to put on the little vestry room and they put this on in 1825 the vestry room and robing room and uh, it's now an office hopefully it's well it's not too untidy but we use that a lot of our parish activity and indeed everything that takes place from the vestry now I just laughed whenever I, I read through this uh, little book that we have that, that whenever uh, they were doing some renovations recently, when they lifted uh, the wooden floor, they discovered it was laid on the grass. <laughs> so hopefully uh, it's a bit more solid now. And indeed, uh, this is mentioned in the book as well. It uh, it's just talks a wee bit about the original church and the site of it and everybody, uh, the clergy of Jumbo and the rectors, and it shows the Georgian pews and the setup, and uh, of course, uh, the big pulpit and uh, the reading desk. So. Uh, you will be able to read a wee bit more about that in the book. Now, as we come through uh, the main entrance into the church, uh, quite unusually, you will see the lovely red carpet and red walls. Now, these are our recommendation as well. Uh, churches in the medieval times had very vibrant colours, rural parishes. So, uh, thankfully, it was uh, copied and uh, done here 
in Ballylesson Church. Uh, now, as we come in, you will see there's a lovely picture that we've had presented to us in memory of uh, Myra Mealy. Uh, it's a lovely picture of the church as well, the painting, but you will see the beautiful organ, and unusually it's at the back of the church, but I find it quite fascinating and that it carries through uh, when we are worshipping uh, together. And uh, this particular organ is, uh, you wouldn't believe it, I thought it was quite uh, new, but it's not. It actually was, uh, it's called a, you see, I've just read it from the book, it's called a fine two manual organ by the coach builder, by Conacher of Huddersfield, and was installed in 18. 93. I think that's when Sheila started to play it, uh, but at a cost of £350, and it's absolutely magnificent and beautiful. And just as you look around the church, you will see uh, our lovely windows and lights, and the lights themselves are electrified, but they are the original brackets that the oil lamps in the original church would have been placed on. And also, uh, we have a number of memorials. Uh, this one uh, is, uh, was, was, was placed in the church in memory of the rector's son at the time and also his wife, but his son uh, actually perished uh, when the SS Lusitania was torpedoed by a German submarine on the 7th of May 1915. And also uh, it took uh, his grandchild as well. So that's a little bit of history. Now the Bat family were very influential in this church and indeed were pop probably a very influential in the Belfast Bank at the time. The church continued uh, to grow, and indeed Belfast and the surrounding area continued to grow. But as you see, the pews are empty, but we hope and pray that you will be back with us soon as we come towards the chancel and indeed uh, the east window with the beautiful verses of Scripture. Come on to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And indeed the window that is in memorial of Robert Batt, and indeed that was uh, put in in 1864, and a beautiful window filled with scripture, and I sort of featured that before as well. Uh, now the transepts, they were added uh, after uh, sort of a, a, a great period of growth, uh, 20, uh, two decades of growth, and uh, culminating in the 1859 revival, when they had to extend the churches. So here in Ballylesson, in the parish of Jumbo, the church had to be extended. Isn't that marvellous? And we look forward to a time uh, whenever we have this place filled again. Now, over uh, here is where we have our little coffee area for, for Sundays. And indeed, uh, we have a beautiful wooden cross that was made by Andrew Lone, Dr. Andrew Lone. And sadly, Andrew uh, passed away, but he left us this beautiful cross that we use uh, for part of our prayer ministry and indeed the font which is unusual is also up at this end of the church and you can read about that that came out of christ church in belfast when it was deconsecrated and that uh, you will be able to read all about that in the little book and as we move back over uh, here uh, we've placed actually in case you're wondering why it's all changed at the front for our live broadcasts we have placed uh, the reading desk in the middle which sort of helps us as we broadcast live to the people around us if it's from here or indeed from the garden but I find this plaque over here quite interesting and it's to uh, Michael Thomas Sadler now Michael Thomas Sadler was an MP but he came here and he belonged to Christ Church in Belfast but he is buried here in this church and it's quite unusual that he fought for the rights of children workers child workers back way way back i think it's i can't make out the date on that but it's late 1700s so we hope and pray that you have enjoyed a little quick virtual tour of the church i noticed museums are doing it so i thought we would have a little rattle at it as well but uh please share this with your friends and family you can uh, we're going to upload the little book the information book that was made in 2005 and uh we hope and pray indeed uh, that you are encouraged by this. And indeed, I want to thank everybody who is continuing to maintain the church and indeed the grounds around us. <laughs>